Hi, welcome to Fictional Narrative. I'm Mary, and isn't my new lighting just so nice and eerie? I love it. Also, it really matches the book cover of the book that we're reviewing today, The Tenant by Katrine Egberg. Okay, so I'm here in editing, and I realized that I didn't press record when I was talking about the summary of the book. Big whoops. But let me get into it. This story of the tenant follows two detectives, Annette and Yep, as they investigate the murder of a young woman named Julie Stender and where her life intersects with that of her landlady and budding novelist, Esther De Laurenti. Now back into the review. So I found Tenet to be a very well-written mystery. I thought there were some really, really good elements to it as an introduction to a series. It is the first book in the series. I don't think that the original language is English. It might be. I'm not sure. I think I've seen titles for like the third or the fourth book of this series um, in Danish. The story also takes place in Denmark and it was really cool to see all of the elements that go into the investigation and how the police really handle things over there. I wouldn't say that it's that different over here, but it's always nice to experience different cultures through a book, especially in this time when we're just, we're not traveling and books are one of those things that just give you an introduction to a different culture. So that's always fun. There are also details about forensics that goes into it. What's interesting about this novel is it doesn't go into forensics in a sort of high-tech way. It's more very basic, but at the same time, the evidence that you get out of it is kind of very basic, but the way that the author utilizes it is actually a really cool way to help tell this story. Tenant I found was very well balanced in terms of it being plot driven and character driven and the supporting characters of this story are incredibly important. They really help to move the story forward and the way that they're constructed, their backgrounds are deeply personal. Julia's background is deeply personal. Esther's background is deeply personal and the way that their lives intersect is deeply personal. So you have all of these good elements that go into this story. I feel like you can really tell that there's a lot of thought and love that went into crafting the story. Now Julie is the murder victim of the story and we know this, but I don't feel like most of the characters really had a lot of sympathy for Julie in terms of you know, the detectives when they were discussing her background or the murder in general. I think only Annette, to me, in my opinion, shows Julie, like, a little bit of sympathy. And she is kind of a brash character, so it's really interesting that she's the one that's, like, keeping, uh, yep, in place and, like, you know, do the job. This is what happened. I really like Annette. I think between... Yep, and Annette, she is the one that I definitely can get emotionally attached to. At first, her brashness kind of like rubbed me the wrong way because she does have her judgments. I didn't think she was very patient, but ultimately, the great thing about her is when it comes to her job, she does it and she does it well. With Yep, there just seems to be like a blur almost. Every character, I will say, is going through their personal thing. So that's fine. He's going through his own personal journey, which I thought was a very good one. It just made me kind of question him in the timing of this investigation. In my opinion with mysteries, you don't need really likable detectives if your story follows detectives. It, you, you don't. And sometimes that's even a good thing because then it comes into question what value does this character bring into this story? And it does help develop the character in a way. Have I seen detectives that I like? Absolutely. I don't think Yep and Annette are very likable, but they each bring value, which is why I think this is such a good introduction to this series and why I rated it a 3 out of 5. But the fact that I feel Julie didn't really get the sympathy that she should have gotten from other characters is part of the reason why I rated it a 3 out of 5. She is the murder victim and 
I feel like the murder victim should get some sympathy. Another thing that I didn't like, and I think this is probably also a cultural thing, like maybe, I don't know how big of a deal this is in Denmark. In the course of investigating her past, uh, the detectives do have to look at her family members, her friends, her exes, you know, the basics. And the use of the term former lover really rubs me the wrong way. And I'm not talking about because of the phrase. I'm talking about it in terms of context. I really, I just didn't appreciate it. I was like, I just felt that description had no place and it just kept being used like it was normalized. So that's why I'm like, I don't know if that's just like the language used in translation. I don't know if that's a cultural difference thing where I'm just different and Americanized, but... And although there are a lot of twists and turns, I wouldn't say that this is really the most intense book. I do feel like there were certain moments where we follow Yep's personal conflict in which the pace of the story and the urgency of the investigation dies off a little bit. And I, I believe it also factors in the way I feel that I, I question his inve investigative tactics and his professionalism because he's going through his uh, personal conflict. Is that fair? You read the book and you let me know, okay? <laughs> I feel like I really wanted to get to know more of Annette. There really wasn't a balance in terms of, okay, this is Yep's personal life and then this is Annette's. Annette's story we really haven't gotten into much makes it seem like their dynamic is a little bit hollow because of it. Like there is definitely something that's keeping them from being like friends and not just work friends. Esther is probably my most favorite character out of the entire book. I always appreciate characters that even though they go through so much still retain their kindness and she definitely does. Her dynamic with the villain is a huge driving force in the story. Speaking of the villain, it's always a sign of like good construction for the villain that I can also feel sympathy for him. Um, the killer, that is, to be specific. Those are basically all my critiques about why this is a 3 out of 5 for me. It's probably more of like a 3.5 out of 5, but I really can't round up. It's not really a 4 out of 5, so it's a 3 out of 5. Anyway, I love the way that the story ended. I would not classify it as a happy ending, but I would classify it as almost like a very classical type of noir ending and it just leaves you there thinking. I was also very happy that I was able to finish this book in a day. Even though it's not the most suspenseful, I would say that I really didn't want to put it down. I still wanted to understand the mystery. I still wanted to understand the motivations of the killer, the villains, and even the person that I would say is the biggest hero, which is Esther. If you don't usually read mysteries, but you like a good introduction mystery, I would definitely recommend this book. I also recommend a good number of cozy mysteries, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, if you made it this far and you want to see more of me, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, tell me if you think I am crazy about this book and it should absolutely be rated up even higher. Also, make sure to check the description below for my socials and some resources. And I'll see you next time. Bye!